I was always most of the time called out on the assembly ground so that day it wasn't new but what was new was they said they were going to expel us we are going to get expelled hello guys welcome back to my channel if you're stopping by for the first time my name is Eva and I am a Nigerian youtuber living in Lagos today's video we're going to be doing a chit chat get ready with me well I just you about my boarding house experience, my secondary school, my high school, for those of you that are not Nigerians, my high school experience in the boarding house. I'll be leaving the products, the names of the products in the description box below or on the screen or both. So you guys, let's start. So first things first, we're going to be cleaning my face. Make sure you always do your CTM process. CTM being cleanse, tone and moisturize. Like it helps a lot. Next, I'll be going in with the Thea's Witch Hazel in Rose Petal just to clean my face some more. Going in with my moisturizer. For those of you that don't know, I am a Nigerian and I am an Igbo girl and I am from Anambra State, right? So growing up was very interesting. My, my childhood was very interesting. As a child, I was kind of like a bit quiet. I played a lot. Even as much as I was quiet, I played a lot. I was in a compound full of children. Like there was no day that passed that we do not play. I grew up, I grew up in Kaduna. I was born and bred. I was raised in Kaduna State. I attended my secondary school in Kaduna and I attended two secondary schools. The first secondary school I attended was Christ Ambassadors College, uh, which was located at Sabontasha. When I got the admission, I went to, my mom took me to school and the first thing I, I had this feeling of was I was feeling uneasy, but what can I say? You just have to go to school. Just go to school. I resumed, I resumed in October. Meanwhile, school started in September, so I wasn't really familiar with most of the faces in school then. I had bullies in just one. I was bullied. I was um, I was picked on. I was like it was really sad. I don't know why I was picked on, but then we had all these girls that had grown like we see breasts, you know, they had bum bum, so they felt like they were more. They were like our seniors. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So that was what I think they felt. That was why they could intimidate some of us. In Christ Ambassadors, as a just one student, you have to go through um, a particular block. So the just one students and the other students are not in the same hostel. So the just one students, we were in a hostel called Red Bricks. So that was our hostel throughout just one before you move over to the main hostel. I went to school with this um, senior masset. That was my box. If you don't know a senior masset, a senior masset is that is a box. It's an iron box, basically. Mine was big and it was painted red, green, and black, I think. I got a bunk space. I was up bunk. I had, still in my the same set, a just one student down bunk. Was in greenhouse but by the time I, I resumed school greenhouse hostel or greenhouse room in red bricks was already full so i had to uh, um, take a bunk in um, purple house there was a day i wanted to climb up to my bed and the the girl i can't even remember her name the girl down was like i shouldn't step on her bed and our bunk was this iron bunk, so there was no form of ladder or anything. We had iron bunks, so there was no way we could. You have to step on somebody's bunk or bed or something. So she said I shouldn't step on her bed. And I was wondering, how am I supposed to do that? If I don't step on your bed, how am I supposed to climb up to my bed? She obviously didn't care. She should have told me not to step on her bunk. So the way I flew on that bed that day, I do I did not wonder because me I didn't I don't like trouble, I don't like wala. So immediately she told me not to step on her her bed. I said, okay, no problem. And I didn't step on her bed. I just climbed up somehow, some way. 
I climbed up and I think I was sleeping. So later that night, that particular night, I don't know how it happened. I fell from my bed. I fell from up bunk down. Wow. When I fell, <laughs> when I fell, if you see the speed that I used in climbing up, <laughs> I climbed back up very fast. The next morning, some of my roommates they were like, say who, who was that person that fell down? And there was somebody that fell down. I mean, I did not want to say anybody. I was just going my thing. I didn't say anybody. Visiting day came. My my mom didn't come for my visiting that first time. I was so sad. Like, you know when you're seeing a lot of people coming for their children. They came for a lot of my classmates, but my mom didn't come for me. I, I don't know why or what happened that she couldn't make it, but I was sad. I cried. I cried. Well, I think that was the that was my rite of passage in some way. That was my rite of passage, and before you know, um, I kind of got used to um, just in case probably my mom didn't come or my dad didn't come. So that was how we were going, and just one was really sad, especially in the hostel. It was sad. It, it was somehow shy. But then moving to the main hostel, when I was in Jess 2, that was when it became fun. That was when I started enjoying my boarding house experience. I was I was that junior student that seniors loved, that seniors liked. You get so I was always getting a lot of favors from seniors, especially the SS2 seniors, because my godmother was in SS2. But there was this one senior. I don't want to mention names. I don't want to call names. <laughs> but this senior, I think that just to, I think that was when my elder sister came and joined me in that same school. So she was in SS1. And my sec my first secondary school is um, there was no everybody you have to respect your immediate senior. A just three students can send a just two students. A just a, a SS1 student can send a just three students. So that was how it was. I started making friends with these seniors. But this senior, let me say senior X, okay, she had a thing for me. She, she, she had it in for me. There was no day I was not punished by that lady, by that girl, by that senior. I was always punished. Meaningless things, though. There was one day during dinner, she told me to sneak in food into the hostel for her. How? How am I supposed to do that? I tried my best and our matron, her, her house is in front of the dining. So she more like, more or less sees everything that moves around that dining. So I was thinking, and if I didn't bring that food, my own don't finish, I just know. So I was thinking how I was going to um, take in food for this senior. Um, on that particular day, there was no way I could have because um, um, our matron came outside, she brought her chair out as she was in front of her, her house. So how, how, how was I supposed to do that? How? I went back to the hostel and I went to meet Senior Exo. He said, there was no way I could have brought your food in. And that particular day was rice. So it was a Wednesday. That day they cooked rice, very sweet rice. So I said, there was no way I could have sneaked in your food to the hostel. She just never, she just keep quiet, she just shut up that I'm very stupid, I'm this, I should go and hang. Hey, good. And hanging is is a type of punishment that you have to, your legs are not touching the ground. You, you hang on two bunks. So you'll be in the middle of two bunks. How would I explain this thing? Let's say these are two bunks. You'll be in the middle. These are two bunks. You'll be in this space here hanging your hand will be up here that is on the up bump your hands will be up so you'll be hanging and then your legs will be <laughs> dangling so that was what i was doing and before you know my sister came to check up on me there was no day my sister comes to that room to check up on me that i was not having punishment like if she comes she'd be like, i'm looking for my sister look at that day i had a position she just saw me and then she left so that was how it was going until they graduated, then my school mother said was now in SS3. I had senior friends in Red House, 
especially I had senior friends, especially in Red House and then in Green House, and then I had one in in Purple House, and the seniors in Blue House, there were just a few of them, a few of them. I didn't have any friend in Yellow House to observe siesta. That time that they say you should sleep, I don't know, I cannot. It's not possible. I don't know how to sleep in the afternoon. So that time that they say go for siesta, going for siesta. I will be. I might be on my bed, but my eyes are not closed. There was one day the one of the seniors in Blue House came for inspection to see people that are sleeping and the people that are not sleeping. <laughs> and then she called my name and I said yes. Oh my God! <laughs> she told me to come down. The kind of punishment I served before I went for afternoon prep that day. My school mother now came and begged on my behalf, and she let me go. Some seniors are just wicked. It's when you are sleep, when they say you, when they call for siesta that that they will tell you to go and wash their uniform. Senior now said that I should come and go and wash her uniform. And then the senior on duty was I think was was the head girl, a big assistant head girl, one of them, and she was in yellow house and she didn't like me. She usually tells me to my face, okay, because you think you are friends with my classmates, then I can't punish you. You will be misbehaving and all that. So she tells me to my face, so I know she doesn't like me. That day, she was the one on duty. And then she caught me. You know that she she almost fought with her classmates because of me. Like, like that's what I'm saying. I was that junior seniors like it. I was the junior that usually send letters to. <laughs> I was the junior that they usually give letters to go and give their boyfriends. You know that kind of stuff. That just three and um, I changed my school. To another school in just three first term or second term there about this school I went to prelude comprehensive college was more like <laughs> you know in Christ ambassadors immediate seniors that that's and those that were in just three when I was in just two my immediate seniors they they were timing me hey god they were timing me they say by the time they will enter SS3 or by the time my school mother said passes out, that what they would do to me, what they would do to me, so they were really timing me. So my mom came at the right time. My mom came at the right time, came and changed my school. So I was glad that I didn't finish from Christ Ambassadors, even though I missed some of my friends and and I missed the school. First day I entered Prelude, I was like in my mind, I was like, what kind of school is this? And eventually I started hearing junior students calling senior students by their name. No senior this, no senior that. I wasn't used to that. I'm like, hello, why? Why is this happening? They said, eh, that, that, because it was a new school. It was a new school. So they said the principal said that nobody, everybody is equal. Nobody should call each other by, nobody should call anybody senior this, senior that, blah, 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 blah. That he doesn't want anybody to punish anybody in the school. I'm like, what? What kind of school is this? So I was like, me, I don't know. I don't know about that. Fast forward to when I when I entered SS2. So the SS3, the SS3 students, they were my class, my sets, we give them a tough time. Like I would I would not even lie. I wouldn't lie. We gave them a tough time. Like we didn't even let them intimidate us. Eventually now they started doing all this senior stuff, you know, they are giving them prefect posts. They started placing, acting up. And then we, myself, we were not having it. I'm back. I did my brows off camera. If you want to know how I did it, I have a detailed eyebrow routine video on my channel. I'm going to link it up here so you can watch. So, moving on, I entered um, SS2 and I was very stubborn to the SS3 students. I give them a lot of a tough time. Like I give them tough time. Like it's, it's not something I'm proud of, but I don't know. I think it was just the the um what will I say? But I was really really stubborn to them. I was really rude to them. Which I don't know why. Charlie the head boy. I'm very sure wherever that boy is now, he's never going to forget me because I gave him a tough time. Like, and in as much as I was, 
I was stubborn to my seniors. I didn't take bullshit from my juniors. Like I said, generally, we gave the SS3 students a tough time and we didn't allow them, the junior students, the SS1 students, to like give us tough time. No, we didn't, we, 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 we didn't do that. Going on to SS3, one midterm like that, we came back from one midterm and um, we resumed school on a Sunday, yeah. We resumed school on a Sunday. So that particular Sunday, we were just together in the room and we were just in, I don't know what, what came over us. I don't know what we were thinking. We decided to go to the boys' hostel. We went to the boys' hostel. We were there for a while, we were just in, just in, and then we came back. But the boys came over and the worst thing happened. The boys slept over in our hostel. A lot of students didn't resume that particular day, so the school was really scanty. We thought we were cool, we thought we were, we had, as in, skilled, you get. Unfortunately for us, a junior student saw, and she reported us to the principal. So we, we, we went to the assembly now, because you know, school just resumed, so there must be an assembly the next day. So we went for assembly, and um, our um, principal kept talking, 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 and we thought everything was fine until our principal said that there are some students in this school that think one thing, one thing, and then he started listing names. He was calling names Paul. The funniest thing is most of us that he called were prefects. I was the labor prefect in my set. Yeah, so he was calling and the next thing they said that we we the boys came to sleep in our hostel and that we went to their hostel, this and that, this and that. So they flogged us, they flogged us on the assembly ground. I was always most of the time called out on the assembly ground so that day it wasn't new but what was new was they said they were going to expel us we we're going to get expelled for a few of us they, they were calling us in one by one asking more like an interrogation and then when i went in i think the 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 principal the principal um admin she was like that my name is in the black book Blah, blah. I said, what is black book? Why is my name in a black book? Why? What am I doing here? That I'm very stubborn. I do this. That she has been hearing a lot of complaints about me. Blah. In the long run, that I will have to go and call my parents because I'm going to get expelled. Hey, kill me. Just kill me. Let me just die. Expelled to whose house? Me and my friend, we both, they told us to leave the school premises. Which we did. And then when we were in the bus, I and my friend were contemplating whose father's house, whose father's shop are we going to go to first? And then we finally agreed to go to my father's shop because my father's shop was like the first. We we'll have to get to my father's shop to get to our own father's shop. When we got to the shop, fortunately for us, fortunately for me, my dad was not around. When we got there, my brother saw us and he was like, because he's familiar with my friend, he saw us and was like, uh -uh, what are we doing outside and what's happened? Why are we not in school? And we told him that we came to check something. We did tell him that they suspended us or they told us to come and call our parents. Okay, there are no problem. We shall went back to school. Who are you expelling? We went to school. I don't finally decide it was we were going to meet principal that night. We went, he was outside his house and we went and started begging. Hey, I don't I know just I don't beg rich. I don't beg for anything like the day I begged for <laughs> forgiveness from the principal. We were like that sir, punish us, give us any punishment that we're going to serve. Just do anything to us, but don't expel us, don't suspend us, don't tell us to bring our parents. He, he was sharp, parry, that we are, that she, he told us to bring our parents, that why are we still in this school premises? He threatened to throw us out to that night. Why are we in the school premises, this and that, this and that? We say, sir, our parents, we went, we actually went to our parents' shops, but they were not around, so we decided to come back. And I said, what are we coming there? Why did we go home? Blah, 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 blah. Hey. The said that he can't forgive us, that we have to call our parents, you know? 
he was shy at talking that he knows my father, he knows my friend's father, he knows this, that we are, our parents are good people, blah 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 blah. And why are we trying to spoil our parents' name? And why would we have invite boys over to girls' hostel to sleep? Then, eventually, our begging yielded something and we weren't suspended again. We weren't expelled. The punishment that our principal gave us was for us to crawl from the dining hall down to his house. And from the dining hall to his house, it's like it's ascending. And the ground of that school is not hard, it's not smooth, it's not anything. It was sandy. You know this type of sand that very hard coarse sand that um had stones in it. We said no problem, so I was still crawling. Our principal was like that. We shouldn't try this again. That we know we're supposed to. What the elf, what the seniors of the school were supposed to be looking after the junior ones. This, that, that. This, that, that. That we shouldn't do that again. And we and we said yes, sir. We're not going to do that again. And that was how we got off the hook. It's something else that I remember that we did or that I did during second during my body. <laughs> we cook in the hostel. Like I was, I was, I was something else in school. I was something else in secondary school. My flat, my room. There was a time then I was in SS one. Yeah, some of my roommates they, that were in SS three at that time, they did um, home management practical. So we had pots, we had leftover rice, we had this, that, that, that in the room. So one of my one of the senior roommates then she was like, okay, that. This thing that we have is not enough. So let us go and take some from the kitchen. And the kitchen is very porous. They just keep everything on the floor. Especially on the perishables. They keep it on the floor and it's just there. So it's just there. Both of us we went there. We, we met the security guy. She spoke house out to him. Told him that we wanted to just get something. That we forgot something in the dining. So we just wanted to get it. And he was like, okay, hurry up. And he wants to off the light. And that's when we went to carry pepper. We, we saw sweet potato. We carried onions and we went to cook. Now my room was in in front of the principal's house. There was no way that the principal was not going to perceive that thing. What do we do? We closed all the windows. We closed the door. All of us, both the junior students, other people that were in the hostel, all of us were there. My boarding house experience was really, really, really interesting. Like I enjoyed it. A whole lot of things happened. I met amazing people, most of which were still in contact till date. I don't know what would have become of me if I finished in Christ Ambassadors. What do you think? Therefore, Kimisha. I was glad that I changed my school. And again, something that happened to me in Christ Ambassadors was I was reacting. My skin is very sensitive. So I react to anything and probably everything. So I was reacting to the water. Yeah. So if you see my toes, in between my toes, then I had this, um, I don't know if anybody understands what I'm saying. I had, it was always whitish, like anytime I put my hand in between my toes, I always get this chunk of flesh. I can pick out a chunk of flesh in between my toes and I was always having boils, like boils. Every time I was having boils, different parts of my body. Mommy didn't want that anymore and then she decided to change our school and ever since she changed our school I did not have those stuff again. Went off camera to finish my eye look and I'll be going in with this pencil from Beauty Line by Didi. So I'll be going in with this lip stain from Nuban Beauty. I'm just going to drop fast, fast, fast. You all know that I am never complete without my glosses. So I'll be going in with the classic USA clear gloss over my lip stain. Something else about my body school experience, there were these things that they usually call um, Madame Kwe Kwe. I never saw one, but apparently Madame Koi Koi was a woman, or is a woman, I don't know, that um, 
lost a pair of her shoe. I think that was the story behind it. And she goes out at night every day looking for that shoe, more like Cinderella. There was this other one I heard a story about. This particular one was called Kato. Kato is a huge monster like that. I don't think that anyone has seen him before. But apparently, he usually comes to the girls' hostel basically to come and rape um, female students. I don't know how true all these stories are, but for me, I never saw one. The most common body school um, um, monster is the bush baby. Do you think bush babies are real? Because I, I literally always hear that they are real. The bush baby story is that they are looking for their mother, so they always go with a lamp and a mat, right? So if you collect a mat, if you collect the lamp or the mat from them, you are in for, you have looked for their trouble. I don't know how true all these things are, but these were some of the things that <laughs> kept us going in secondary school. But personally, I didn't see any of these things. But I was always hearing stories. Next thing I'll be going in with is my highlighter. I'm going to go in with my mascara for my lower lash. Here, some people say that they are not going to allow their children go to a boarding house just because um, in a boarding house there are a lot of atrocities happening there. When I go to boarding houses, don't usually turn out right. I I've heard someone say that and I'm like, I am a product of a boarding school. How did I turn out? Did I turn out right or not? So it's just all in your head. I feel um, um, going to a boarding school, sending a child to a boarding school from JS1 to SS3, it gives them a sense of responsibility, it allows them to like, okay, my parents are not here, but what they taught me is still in my head. Like every day in the school, when I think about something, I'll be like, my mom is looking at me, my dad is looking at me, so act right, act right, be responsible, you know? As long as you train your child well, and that particular child does not allow um, peer pressure or influence affect him or her, they are good. I feel it's a good way of allowing your child grow without you because you will not always be there. Let's say the truth, you will not always be there. So sending a child to a boarding house is for me is legit my children they already know they are not here yet but they know that they're going to go to a boarding house like there's no argument there. because even those people that go to day school those people that are not boarders they still they still what i'm saying is who goes spoil go spoil that's all <laughs> that's all i'm saying i really enjoyed my stay in the boarding house i enjoyed it like a whole lot it, it, it taught me a lot of things and um for all those wicked seniors was that a wicked senior was I? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, if you ask me, I'll say I wasn't. But if you ask some other people, they might say I am. For all those people, that senior that was making me hang, kneel down, crawl, do this, do that, do that, do that. Going in with my setting spray. Let's bathe. That's all I have for you today. Hope you enjoyed every bit of this um, video. I know I don't have the most interesting um, boarding house experience story. I would like to know what your experiences was like for those of you that went to a boarding house and for those of you that didn't go, do you wish you went to a boarding house and uh, will you allow your children go to a boarding house? I would also like to know what your thoughts are on bush babies because those things, I don't know if they are real. I don't know if they are real. Has anybody seen them? Have you ever seen a bush baby or Madame Koi Koi or all those things that they said? Have you seen any? If not, I'm going to be signing out here. Be sure to like this video, drop a comment, share this content, subscribe if you haven't. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.